Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Tea Talks. My beautiful friends, Elaine Haney and Jada Ashnett. Did Asa. I say that right? Asa. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. But Elaine Haney is a part of Emerge Vermont. That's right. And Jada is a part of Free Her Vermont. And I admire you both. You know, I've, I've learned so much from Emerge and so much from Free Her. And so I'm grateful to have you here to share some history, some tea, some... I'm so excited we're going to get a lady president! <laughs> <laughs> so, Elaine, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Elaine Haney, like you said, and I am the executive director of Emerge Vermont. Mm -hmm. And we have been around in Vermont. We're in our 11th year now. We celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. And uh, just this past weekend, you were there with me. We celebrated our annual, we did our annual celebration of women in politics. And we gather and, and provide um, lots of really great speeches from um, some of our alums. And then we, um, we gave out the Kunin Achievement Award, which we give out every year. It's named after Governor Kunin, who's our founder. And um, we gave it to Marcel Leahy this year. And right now I'm recruiting for our next class of, um, cl of our signature training program, which you participated in last year, or this yes. year, 2024. 2024, yes. And it's basically um, five months, about 70 to 80 hours of um, campaign training. So we, we talk about everything you need to know from fundraising to public speaking to endorsements to vote number win number all everything you need to know to run for office and um it's, it's a great job and we have a lot of fantastic alums who are out there doing amazing things from congresswoman becca ballant to attorney general charity clark secretary of state zara copeland hansis there's 42 graduates in the uh legislature and there's dozens and dozens of women serving on school boards and select boards across the state so we've had a really really solid impact and i just can't wait to keep doing it and getting more women trained to run for office and we have our first black female running for governor yes esther charleston esther charleston Yay! the first black woman in vermont history to receive a major party nomination for governor Isn't that awesome and only the second in the country yeah wow she that's is fantastic amazing she is amazing and she gave such a wonderful speech and she really just showed her fire of commitment for vermonters and Absolutely. really just a remarkable person so and i enjoyed becca did you see those shoes yes Baby, <laughs> those shoes was Fierce. She wears sparkly shoes oh, a lot. Beautiful. <laughs> I had to. I was like, "Hi, Becca. I'm Lydia Diamond. Do you remember me? Don't worry about it. I love those <laughs> shoes. The shoes were beautiful. Yeah. Rainbow sparkle. As sparkly as oh, her personality. Okay. That is so awesome. Yeah. And it was a delight to meet um, Senator Leahy and Marcel. Yeah. They were a delight, and Madeline Cunin, oh, she blew me away She's again. amazing. Because, <laughs> what is she, 90? She will be 91 next week. Wow. Oh, this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she was phenomenal. She was. Wow. She was truly, I had a good time. Yeah, she was great. And, you know, it's so wonderful to see where all the women we train end up because it's not just people who are in office right we have like an agency secretary secretary Moore of the agency national Re natural resources mm -hmm. is an emerge alum there are women running organizations all over the state uh, the the head of the Vermont Arts Council is a okay. emerge alum so it's like we go everywhere and a lot of the delegation to the National Democratic Convention this summer probably there were probably like 15 emerge vermont alums there nice. you know some of us were delegates and some of us were um committee members and some of us were directors of other programs and stuff it was really really cool so i brought you a present from the national Con convention Aww. <laughs> so these were going all over Aww. the convention they were trading them like the olympics with pins oh, I love that. so this one says politics era because you know taylor swift <laughs> This one says leader, Aww. which you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's and that beautiful. one says Kamala. Uh, 
<laughs> I have some too, and then I didn't realize there was going to be no, more than one okay. person. So. Don't worry at all. But, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. They were giving them out, and everyone was trading them at the convention. It was nice. so fun. And um, actually, you should have. Let's see. You take the one. This is Harris. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> and you can, do you want political girly or Madam President? Maybe political girly. Yeah, I feel like that's my energy. Thank you. Thank you. It's just, it was that really so fun. Cute. And, and I love the idea of women getting together and in addition to doing phone banking and door knocking, they're making friendship bracelets. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I love that. Beautiful. Really awesome. <laughs> so, Jane, yeah. let's hear about Free Thank you. I love the energy for Free Her. So, yeah, once again, my name's Jaina. I'm the campaign director for Free Her Vermont. We're a campaign of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. It's an organization run by some extraordinary black women who were incarcerated in federal prison together. Mm -hmm. They were in Danbury, Connecticut, and Angie, our executive director, and we have a few founders like Shea Smith, um, Rest in Power, Phyllis Hardy, mm. um, Virginia Douglas, Taz Moore. They were all incarcerated and decided like we can't allow our sisters and siblings to continue going through this and really started plotting like in prison, how are we going to end incarceration for women, girls, trans and non-binary people? Yes. And you know, my executive director, she was the first one out of prison and really hit the ground running. Um, Phyllis Hardy, our matriarch and grandmother, she had women inside the prison like knitting, making things. They were doing whatever they could to get the National Council started. And in those formative years, they were doing a lot of listening sessions. And out of that came the Free Her campaigns. People felt they needed hyper-local campaigns that were directly in neighborhoods affected by incarceration to really figure out how those smaller communities could tackle this big issue of incarceration. So we started specifically in New England because we have the lowest rates of women's incarceration. So fast forward, I became the Vermont organizer and it's just been some of the most rewarding work I've honestly ever done in my life and I've made beautiful relationships with people like you and yeah just super amazing so I admire you thank you you and Elaine I admire the work that you do because we don't get it enough mm -hmm. you know uplifting enough love yeah. enough shine mm -hmm. enough sparkle yeah you know and so I appreciate emerge Elaine is the best boss lady I've ever had. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I so appreciate her. She made me recognize how different she is, mm -hmm. you know, how beautiful and phenomenal she is, Aww, you know, yeah. and some of us need that, <laughs> Yeah. seriously. And then free her, I'm formally incarcerated. Mm -hmm. I came to Vermont in 94. I didn't have a record. Mm -hmm. I came from Brooklyn. But I was here six months before I got in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I uh, got out of jail in 97, and I never looked back. And I always want to give back. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it broke my heart with um, the recent shooting downtown, yeah. you know. Um, I got some ideas, we'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But I do have um, a couple of young women black women that I've spoken to and they given emerge some thought. Oh nice. That's yes. great. Mm -hmm. That's why I was thinking about the date. Yeah, October yeah. October tenth. So I'm happy to know it's a soft date. It's a soft deadline. I yes. I end up talking to folks because I, I, I can tell whether they've finished their application or it's still in progress. Mm -hmm. So I can reach out to them and say, hey, you know, do you want to have any questions? Do you want to talk about it while you finish your application? And I try to leave enough time awesome. so that it's not a really hard deadline. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody's busy. The holidays are coming. Right. And so any little bit of time you can get yeah. works. And some folks are... You know, it, it's scary to yeah. take a step towards running for office. And so that, you know, it feels like you're taking a really big step just to sign up for the class. 
and it can be hard. Well, I kid you not, the first time I ran, it wasn't scary, it was mind boggling. Yeah. You know, because how could you not ever have a person of color? I mean, so what Vermont is the white, said to be the whitest state in America, but there are lots of people of color here. Yeah. But there's that fear. Yeah. You absolutely. know, and it's big, you know. Yeah. Putting but, yourself out there in public office is a, can be a very big, scary deal. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And when I got on the ballot the first time, I was scared, yeah. but I wouldn't allow them to see me sweat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's upcoming for Free Her? Um, we're actually gearing up to have a week of abolition from October 23rd to October 30th. And we're going to have some fun events with Pride, Pathways, the National Lawyers Guild. We're trying to get an expungement clinic together. So Ooh, it'll nice. be like a really good mix of direct actions people can plug into. Or like with Pathways, we're going to do like a tarot reading night. Okay. So just like getting to know yourself. That's or, scary too. <laughs> yeah, that, it can be scary. It's like some hard truths, you know, <laughs> that surface during readings. But yeah, some exciting stuff coming up. So stay up to date on our Instagram and our listserv to learn some more. Mm -hmm. And is there somewhere to donate? Yeah, you can look on, so the nationalcouncil.us backslash Vermont will bring you right to our page. And Ari, our comms director, she's on it. So you scroll down a little bit you'll see a join us today and then to the right, um, donate. So you can just click right on that donate button. Awesome. Appreciate that plug, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, saying Emerge Vermont is emergevt.org and there's a contribute button in the upper right corner. Yeah! yeah. yeah. I'm so excited to be a part of this history. Mm. Herstory, yeah. you know, because um, I, I don't know who it was, but Somebody shared a story with me about a little girl who asked if we ever had a female president. Oh, that was Becca. She said that at the that event on was, Saturday night. Yes, it was so phenomenal. Yeah. It my heart. Yeah. You know, because I have gr three granddaughters. My oldest granddaughter will be 16 in two days. Wow. You know, yeah. and they are very inquisitive, nosy. Love, they love tea talk. <laughs> and so I, I feel like folks should not get distracted by a uh, chump. Hmm. Don't get distracted by Diddy. You know, little things. What's really important for us as women, because it's our turn, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. It is our turn. We have carried this world from day one. Well, it's been our turn for a really long without, time. <laughs> without recognition, right? without representation. <laughs> well, watch out now. Here we <laughs> come, baby. I'm so happy. I'm <sighs> so excited to be riding for Kamala. Oh, it is really great to vote for her. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. She, you know, I've heard that, okay, somebody else said, they're not going to vote for Kamala because she uh, promotes or she promotes genocide, hmm. you know? And I'm like, keep that to yourself. Because if you want to talk about American genocide, hmm. we could have that conversation. And I promise you won't win, okay? <laughs> because people are always looking for things to tear us down you know, little things, nitpicking and stuff like that. And I don't want to hear it. It's our turn, mm -hmm. period, plain and simple. Get on board or be quiet. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. <laughs> oh yeah, the mother in me, the grandmother in me, <laughs> get on board or be quiet. Because we have so many phenomenal women who are looking forward to this. Yeah. They know it's our turn, so yeah. fellas, get it together. <laughs> it's our turn, for real. I'm so excited. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to be running again in 2025. Oh, that's right. good to hear. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, South Burlington, I think it's 
one woman on the council. Wow. And her year will be coming up. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. so. Huh. But I'm encouraging others, you know. Come on, step up, take that leap. Yep. Yep. Don't let fear keep you from doing something you really wanna do. Mm -hmm. Our children need female heroes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? So. Yeah! yeah! So. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to Shaka Khan today. I <laughs> everyone. <laughs> it's all in me. Yeah. yeah Anything? Exactly. Yeah, what we done, baby? <laughs> That's my song. It was one of my mom's favorites, too. That sounds Aww. like maybe a good theme song for oh, Yeah, that's that absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Look, now I got a theme song and t shirt. Yeah. Bang, bang. <laughs> How fantastic. Yay. This is so much, you know, this is goodness. Yeah. You know, people, people are, you know, I don't want to hear it. Get on board or be quiet. <laughs> it's just that simple. Cheers. Cheers <laughs> to tea talk. Yay! Good company. Mm hmm Oh boy. Well, I'm looking forward to um I'm planning a December event. Nice. Because December is always the hardest for me. My mom was born and she died in December. Oh. So every December is difficult, but I try to find a way to make it beautiful and happy and celebratory. Yeah. That's just me. I don't want to be down and out and crying and whatnot. And my grandkids love Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> they don't get it. But you know what? I'm, I just love to celebrate us. Yeah. You know what I'm I love to celebrate goodness. What kind of event are you thinking of? A party. Yeah, love a it. Party. We need some fun. A party. Yes. <laughs> good. Uh, uh, oldie but goodie. Mm. Yeah. You know, I don't have to have today's music. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how. Some days I'll be like, oh, I got to go back. <laughs> and because I'm a Motown baby, mm. I grew up on Motown. Yeah. You know, I was looking at a video called, and there's two of them. The first, We Are the World. Oh gosh, I remember that. Oh my goodness, with Bruce Springsteen <laughs> and Stevie Wonder. I have loved Bruce Springsteen from day one. You know, that voice. You know, I think today I, is his birthday. No. Wow. And I think he's 75. Oh my gosh. What? I, I know, I, right? You can sense that. <laughs> That's <energy>. fantastic. <laughs> I did not know that. I heard that on the radio. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I have always loved oh. Bruce Springsteen. Mm -hmm. His energy. That's raspy voice. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yes. Now, now, actually, I just discovered that there are two We Are The World songs. One is oh. the original from with Bruce Springsteen and um, Michael Jackson was yep. alive. And then the second one, Michael Jackson was gone. It was for Haiti. Oh. oh but the okay. second one, they had added hip hop to it. Okay. It oh. was beautiful. Oh, wow. Nice. LL Cool J, um, Snoop. All Some of the classics. So right. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and it was so beautiful. Yeah. But they were new back then. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, no, this stars. video was from, I want to say, like 2010. Oh, okay. really? Oh, yeah. okay. So I was, listen, this I had never seen it before. I was watching the old one and then the new one. I'm like, wait a minute. Huh. You know? <laughs> Because the first one was for Africa, the second right. one was for Haiti. But it was, oh, what's his name? Um, John, John Claude? No, it's not John Claude. Oh my goodness, I can't call his name. But he is a Haitian um, actor, rapper, um, and when Haiti went through, you know, he really helped to turn up and to raise money because that's where he's originally from. But if I could call his name, you would know exactly who I'm talking about. Because he is big time. He's in everything. Director, producer. 
It was yeah. really, really awesome. But you got to check it out on yeah. YouTube. I didn't know they did another one. Yeah. Me either. I was so <laughs> blessed by it, though. When I saw that they added the hip hop, I was like, ah! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and then he's singing in French. Wow. It was great. Wow. Yes. Wow. It was great. That's so cool. <laughs> awesome. So, you ladies have anything else you want to share? I was wondering if I could ask a quick question of you. Yeah. So the state is thinking about putting a new prison complex in Essex, yes. where I live. Mm -hmm. And I, I know Free Her is really opposed to that. And mm -hmm. I would love to hear, t tell us what, what your position is on that new prison. Yeah. I'd love to hear your position on the new prison, too. Of course. I think it's, no, I'm going to be quiet. You go first. <laughs> OK. Um, so. Obviously, like Free Her, we don't believe in incarceration for anyone. Mm -hmm. But when you specifically start digging into the paths that land women specifically in prisons, a lot of women have been victims of sexual or domestic violence or have extreme mental health struggles because of trauma and things like that. So I feel with every person incarcerated, and this is with everyone in my opinion, but thinking specifically about the women's prison, there's a story there for every woman, and many times before prison that we've failed them, yeah. where safety nets have failed, where community resources haven't been there. So we feel we need to address this in a way where it's not revenge and vengeance focused. It's more, and I know this takes a lot of courage and bravery to wanna help folks that cause harm in our community, but by wanting to rehabilitate someone, that actually changes circumstances so people can step into their power and become who they've always wanted to be. So long story short, instead of incarceration, we'd love to see something that's more healing focused, mm. um, specifically like digging into some of the numbers in our state. Only 13 women have longer than five years until their minimum release date. So one that's showing us that people are usually, there's property crimes or um, substance use related transgressions happening. And so they're going into prison, short stints, quickly going out with more barriers, creating more harm in the community. So it's just a never ending cycle that's bringing in more people, bringing in more communities, creating larger harm. And we really need to end these cycles and stop doing things that perpetuate them. So we really want, one, bolstered services like housing, mental health treatment, substance use like rehabs, detox facilities. We don't have enough of those. And then, you know, for the women that may need more long-term structured support, we could do something like a healing campus mm -hmm. that has deep intensive therapy that maybe has support staff around, but I love yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. That's just, a great idea. Yeah. It's, I love that. you know, like people, I think we've been force fed these kind of narratives where, and I was just having this discussion the other week about these false binaries between good and bad people. And I just believe like there's no such thing, like people get lost, people have trauma, but I think like, you know, killing a person in my opinion there's something wrong mentally that doesn't mean you're a bad person and i think we just need a lot of reworking of our thoughts around why people cause harm mm -hmm. what we do when they yeah so going off on a tangent here but no that was no. great that no. was really fascinating it, you absolutely right even when i went to prison i was not prepared at yeah. all and then i went a couple of times because mm -hmm. When they let me out the first time, um, I got into trouble. I was out of place, mm -hmm. you know. But I felt like it was a setup. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know exactly. And and that happened to me twice. Mm -hmm. So hmm. I would like to not have that, you know, that setup for others, mm -hmm. you know, because if somebody had told me, listen, make sure you. Stay stay on the straight path mm -hmm. don't don't make any turns you know it would have been more helpful my mom um to god be the glory she told me you know i'm not coming back here to visit right <laughs> she came to visit me one time 
<laughs> she said, what are you doing in here? Hmm. I'm not coming back. You know, it was a wake up call for me. I didn't have a problem with holding myself accountable, but I felt like locking me up was not necessary. Hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't hurt anybody yeah. or kill anybody. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. I would love a healing camp. Yeah, it's a great I idea. I love that idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and we have some uh, emerge sisters that are formerly incarcerated. We do. Mm -hmm. and we do. So, this. and we have some emerge sisters who are in the state house working on corrections and and and. Mm -hmm talking about this in this new prison and trying to work work around it because I think it's supposed to have 170 beds I which th feels like a little yeah. over the top to me <laughs> yeah and I, for me it's like if the state has money to build a new prison where are the resources to prevent women to exactly go into prison exactly you know yeah. come on they don't give anything mm -hmm. yeah. and that's wrong I agree. It's it's time to invest in upstream solutions Absolutely. and prisons should be like the last and I don't believe this obviously, but folks that believe that prisons are still a necessary part of society, that should still be the last step we take. Yeah. And not like the default, not the we always go to incarceration for this issue. Um yeah. But yeah, getting back to the bed counts, I believe current bed counts are at 158 even though I don't think our population has gone over 130 people since COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, if we feel we need something, why don't we? So, okay, backtracking a little bit. They are presenting to have a traditional, like secure prison and then a reentry facility. Mm -hmm. I'm still not sure how they will differ, if the programming will actually be delivered as promised, but you know, we could even flip the beds. Like, why can't we do like 150 beds for reentry and yeah. like 30 for secure, even though yeah. I want zero secure, but I'm willing to compromise. Right. And it just feels like we're not moving left when there's little steps we could take like, oh, could we do clemency for people who are survived and punished? Could we release the people that are over 60 years old? Mm. There's just a lot of little steps we could be taking to decarcerate mm -hmm. that. I, I just feel there's not effort being put into. I agree. Hmm. I'm glad you're doing this work. Thank you. Yeah. And likewise to mm. you both. I <laughs> so much respect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we are close to... Close to time. <laughs> I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I so appreciate you. And please keep in touch. Always. Absolutely. Yeah! Yeah, I'm so glad you invited me on, and I just love your energy. Mm. And whenever you call or email, like, what does Lydia have to say? <laughs> I'm always excited to hear from you. So awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great I'm to so meet you. Excited Dana. To great to meet you too. Such a great time. Yeah. yeah Tea talk. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want to get Esther for next month. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, wait, next month's tea talk is October 28th. Okay. That's right before the election. She'd yes, be great. Yes, that's, that's going to be juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard from Emma. Mm. I invited her, but I haven't heard back from her. So. She's got a lot going on. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I really fun. Yeah. And we got more work to do. We do. We do. Yeah. We do. Hey, a woman's work is never done. Mm -mm. <laughs> hey, we, but it's our turn. I'm so excited. Yes. <laughs> I'm even going to join phone banking. All right. Yes. That's great. <laughs> I haven't done it since Obama, so. I'll send you the information. So we. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. you. Thank you. Always. Thank Yay. you. Appreciate you, too. Thank you. This is great. <laughs>